Build up his unhealthy obsession with hood men until you fall into the trap like I did. See, one thing about me, I thought my baby daddy was a hood nigga. I thought he had big bands, boom, 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 because he was around all the niggas with money. Whole time, they was smacking him in the back of the neck, telling him, go get some Rillos. Go get some Leafs. Go get some wood. Hmm? You gonna go? You know what's crazy? A lot of women are into hood dudes or bad boys. And it's just, it's not, it's not just from our community. This is all across the board. Women are into bad boys. But especially it's a problem in our community because it's just like, how do you expect us to progress as a community if the, if all the women want this type of man, what do you think the men gonna be? If all the women want a certain type of man, we're gonna try to be that man because men make 90% of the decisions based on either getting women or like getting females or their wife. You get what I'm saying? Either if they're single, either everything they, they do is based around getting more women in their lineup, impressing women, or impressing their wife. The majority of men's attention is on that. So if you wanna be a good guy, and you wanna be a man who just handles his business and is responsible and is a good guy overall, you realize there's no reward in that when it comes to women. So what happens is a lot of dudes try to end up becoming a hood dude, just like her boyfriend. Her boyfriend wasn't even really a hood dude. He's the one getting slapped around. Mm. But it's like, even if you got to be a fake hood dude, even if you got to attempt to be a hood dude, even if you're not from the hood, you're going to attempt to be that because that's what the women like in our community majority of the time. So what do you do in that situation? How are we going to progress as a community? I'm not hood at all, at all. But what type of person you thought I was going to try to become to attract women? A hood dude. I'm not even hood. I'm probably going to be the one getting slapped around and stuff like that. But I stay true to myself. You know, I like making jokes and having fun. And being silly. So that's what that's the that's the path I took and look look Ryan with my other channel. And one more thing. I actually tried being a hood dude before. It ain't for me. Now I do like to box and stuff like that. I like, you know, to fight and things like that, you know, from a sport perspective. But it's like I'm not really a hood dude. I'm not about that life. But you know, so I, I, I got blessed and fortunate to be with a woman who don't even who not even a black woman who's not even attracted to hood dudes. Good, because I'm not that. But what is ninety nine percent of the other dudes that look like me gonna do how they gonna be true to themselves when there's no reward to it so i'm not angry you know what i'm saying i'm just i feel like it's a good for discussion you know what i'm saying so i thought that was a good video guys because <laughs> oh let me just do some housekeeping like share subscribe um i don't say it often but it does help and i've been able to grow tremendously because of you guys so Thank you. <laughs> so let me just get this back for a second. But I just want to say, I don't understand this phenomenon. Like, I was raised with a, a, a great father, uh, my mother and father. None of the men in my family are hood, hood dudes. None of, you know, they all um, work for the federal government or some type of, you know, really have a really nice career. I have never been attracted to hood dudes. And yes, I'm, the, I'm not a pastor's daughter, but I'm a... Um, my parents were in ministry. I also went to Christian school my whole life. But even when they'll say like, oh, girls like that always rebel. No, I'd never, not saying I was perfect, but I'd never have been attracted to it. I don't get, you know, is this a phenomenon? Is this a thing now? Like usually back in the day, it was just like a couple girls who were interested in like the bad boys, you would call them, you know? Um, and I guess that's what, I guess there's a difference between a hood dude and a bad boy. But now it seems as though, like, this is attractive. And I don't understand why. Like, as a woman, why would you want to be with a man who has no purpose or direction and he's just living and existing, possibly illegally, um, not really having a, a solid moral compass or foundation for the most part? I'm not saying some... Being from the hood and being a hood dude are two different things. Being from the ghetto and being ghetto, ghetto are two separate things. So when I say this, you can come from the very bottom and, and be an, an, an amazing person, change the world, actually. But what I'm referring to is guys who are in illegal activity, who are just uh, getting any and everybody pregnant, multiple baby mamas, all these different things. What is attractive about this? And this is the thing, and especially in our community, a lot of people say, well, it's just music, you know, a lot of the rap music and things like that. And I think for most 
m most people in the world, it is. You know, if you if you um, look at the different people who actually buy rap music the most, they're not black people. They're not us. You know, a lot of them will like the music, see it as entertainment, but they don't receive it as culture. They don't take it as a way to live in order to, I, I don't know. And it shows me that, like, for us, we will take actors, entertainers, and athletes and use them as a compass or a the barometer or the benchmark of what is uh, attractive and what's acceptable behavior and what we should look like and what we should do. Now, yes, has music and, and entertainers always influenced that? Of course, they still do, but not like in our community. And I think the problem is because we are... we. We are, you know, the family, the black family in particular, is completely been eroded and it's being erased. And especially with fathers being in the home. And a lot of people will say, well, it's these men. They're the ones that, that there's no fathers in our community to guide people, to guide women, to, to guide their daughters on how to choose a man and what is attractive and what's lasting and what has real value and not a bunch of, you know, hood booger uh, activity. We don't, they'll say, oh, it's these men, it's these men. I will agree with you. But guess what? I think it's between 16 to 18 of black men father a, over 80% of the children in our community. 30% of our men are married, and the rest are single, middle class, and childless. So it's not this overwhelming number of black men who are doing this. It's the ones that are being picked. These hood boogers are the dudes that just, you know, dirty, dirty D. Rodney. We've heard all of these terms. And the thing is, a lot of people want you want a hood dude because you want you want to consume. You want that fast money so that you can buy things, so that you can do this and that, and to and to floss and to look a certain way. And it's for a love of money, a love of thrill, a love of excitement, a love of pleasing yourself, a love of self centeredness. Where you know, all of these things, it feels good to do it at the time because you just, it's in your flesh. Whatever your body wants, whatever you desire, you have to have it. There's no planning. There's no thought about the greater community. There's no thought of legacy. There's no question to say, God, how did you design me? Who am I supposed to be with? It goes back to the Sierra's prayer where a lot of women in our community, not all, if you're not one of them, hey, but you all know this. A lot of women in our community want the same type of man. The, the bad boys, the hood guys, and in other communities as well. So I'm, but I'm just calling this out because this is what he's talking about. But on my channel, of course, I'm calling out all, all communities. But in particular, in ours, this is the most prevalent. We have the worst numbers. We, we are in a crisis state. The black family is being uh, systematically erased. And for us as women, if it's our body, our choice, it's also our consequences. The consequences is that our children are being left behind. Our, our families, our family units don't exist. And then our children are, are making choices. Every generation, it gets successively worse because nobody wants to admit there's a problem. Nobody wants to say, hey, maybe the problem is us and our picking and the men that we're choosing to lay down with. When then what happens is we, we'll, we'll spend our youth trying to have these type of guys, you know, while we're young and it's fun and it's toxic. But as we keep going up, we age. It's like the, the like a roller coaster. It's slow at first. Okay? It's slow because it's slow, it's fun, it's toxic, it's whatever. But along the way, we're picking up all this baggage and damage and and, and these mindsets that are honestly uh, demonic, honestly. Even if you're not a believer, you can you can understand these kind of rebellious attitudes that don't fit the norms of life or society. We try to redefine relationships, redefine what things are, really polygamy, uh, polygamous relationships, which you, if that's what you want to do, that's just you get in in the beginning instead of having the whole of the community with these terrible statistics. So what happens is when we're younger, it's fun. He's, he's got a lot of energy. It's, it's, you know, fast money, fast cars. It, it, it's exciting. But then, you know, he's a bad boy. So he gets someone else pregnant. He cheats. He's this, he's that. And you keep being attracted to the same guys. All the while, there's all these other good guys, geeks, nerds, guys that don't have swag, guys going to school, guys starting a regular business, normal guys. They're not fun and exciting in the way you want fun and excitement, okay, because you're toxic. So they're back here watching all of this and they're suddenly building themselves up, building themselves up, hoping to find that good woman. Are these men perfect? No, no one is saying this. No one is saying this. But we as women are going to have to take account accountability as well. But for the vast majority of the men, we've been told our whole life that all these black men are like this. Are these the 16 to 18 percent that women keep dealing with? 
okay, as they age. It's only 16 to 18%. And so we get to this place up here, and then we, 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 when we get into the wall, we fall off in looks and youth and all these other things. And by that time, we, we have trauma. We've been, we're still dealing with drama. And we've tried to raise our standards throughout the summer as we've gotten older and say, you know what, I don't want a guy who's this, that, and the other. So we think raising our standards changes something. That as we go up, we still are dealing with the same dude. Because what do I say? Skittles come in every color, but they're still Skittles. So we think we're picking different, but we aren't. We're picking the same one because we won't get therapy. We won't get our spiritual life in order. We won't be humble. We won't uh, put aside the, the love of money. These things mean more to us than legacy, obedience, honor, you know, integrity. All of these things don't matter. It's, it's fun. It's exciting. He needs to fit in my program. I'm leveling up. But see, it's a deception and it's a lie we tell ourselves and we've been programmed to believe. It's killing us and our families because then we start to fall off and we say, well, where are all the good men left? So while you were dealing with toxicity on the way up on the beginning of that roller coaster, it, you don't really feel it. You know, it's like the, the frog in the bowl in the pot, the hot pan. doesn't feel it if you start it real low. You bring them to a slow boil. And so all of this toxic behavior is a slow boil. And then, see, while we're dealing with all the toxicity, we keep raising the standards of men, but we don't raise our own standards. We don't think about men with the higher standards that we're going to have to meet him where he is, that we're going to have to get off the roller coaster before that first drop. Or we're going to keep collecting bodies. We're going to keep collecting drama. We're going to keep collecting children. All types of things going on. And men mental health issues. Okay? All of this because we don't address it as a community. And so as we're going up on these things are happening, what happens? What starts to happen? We keep raising the bar. But it gets to a place where these men have heard this. They keep hearing they're broke, dusty. They're, they're leaving their family. Things like that. All, even those studies do not prove this out. This is anecdotal. OK, and so we keep we raise this. We raise our standards still dealing with all these guys and these guys over here get to a certain place where they're now, you know, they don't want to deal with us because we we've, we've brought we've had so much. They've been watching us on the sidelines deal with Brad and Tyrone and all the, the hood guys. And they've been seeing this and it's like all the drama and trauma and all the toxicity that comes with that. They're like, I don't want to deal with that. So then we get to a place where we start to look around when we drop off and we're really tired of it. We've raised our standards here and it's still all these good men out here, but our standards here. But the men who have the standards here, we we have fallen off and we've done it to ourselves because of the choices we've made. Doesn't mean you're not a valuable as a person, but on the sexual marketplace, it, it just is not happening. So then what happens is we, we fall off and we look around and say, well, where do all the good men go? And they were always there, but we they weren't fun. There was no fast money. It wasn't exciting. You know, they weren't, uh, these weren't the guys who were cheating on us or things like that. These are the guys who bought flowers, but, uh, or you felt like he was too corny or he was this, that, and the other. Whatever the reason may be. Or a guy, I've seen this many times, a guy who did not look as good when he was younger. As he ages and that face matures and that body gets mature, I've seen this over and over where the guy looks a certain way now. And women are just like, well, why is he with her? Why is he with Becky? Why is he? Because all that time he's had to deal with the options that he was available because the fine black, the fine black women didn't want him. They wanted Pookie and Ray Ray and all these other guys that were not as excited that, that, that brought, that fed whatever was in us that's broken, whatever trauma we have, we, we, we like whatever that man was giving us, it, it fed us, or the way we were raised. Maybe we weren't raised with a good, um, stable father in our life, in our, in our household, okay? Maybe we were born in one of the, the families where, six, where uh, 16 to 18% of the men are father and 80% of the children. So maybe we were raised in those circumstances and didn't see it. And, and as we got older, we did nothing to address it. You know, once we're adults, we all come from somewhere, and we've got to address it. OK, none of us are perfect. All of us have issues, mental health issues. Like I said, I was diagnosed this past year with ADHD, had no idea that I had it. It, it, it broke my world apart when I found out and I realized how it had affected and hurt me my entire life. It had helped me in some ways, but hurt me. It broke me down to my worst one of my had two bad depressions. And that was the one of the worst. But I had to look in the mirror and I had to face it. I couldn't say that's just the way I am and people need to accept me. I had to get specific therapy to help me with that. 
I had to do things to help me with it and not say I'm perfect as is. But see, a lot of times our pride won't let us, we won't humble ourselves. We won't get to that place of brokenness and say, I've got it wrong. Or when we do it, it's too late. It's too late. And it makes us bitter because we know we spent our youth and our body and our womb and everything up for men who were not worth it. They were not the good men. Okay, they were not the good men that our children deserve and they're not the good men that God really designed us to be with. But our choices lead us down a path. And we make these things, but then it's our body, our choice, our life to live, but then it's also our consequences. And this is what I'm seeing. A lot of women had their fun, and then when you're in your 30s and if you've had trauma, kids, whatever has gone on after you focused on, or you focused on career, you know, whatever it was, you get to a certain place and you say, we're all the good men, and they were there the whole time. But see, because no one we we were listening to the sisterhood or whatever we we made choices that honestly have lasting consequences and that's hard to hear does it mean that god is done with you and your life is over and things like that no but you but until you come to a place of humility a place of realization looking in the mirror and reflecting and saying why it, why did i do this why am i doing this why am i addicted to the bad boys to the tyrones to the chads to the why are, why are all these women wanting these particular men only and we start until we start going layers deep this will never fix itself our community will continue to be eroded we will continue to our numbers will continue to decline with marriage with um, children out of wedlock with everything and it's if we I, I implore and I, you know, like I said, I had to follow my face and, and, and come to the end of myself, even not even having many of the things that are out here today or the mindsets. It's, it's like I tell you, it's like I, I've, I'm a time capsule from 20, 15, 20 years ago, because when I saw how bad it was, it shocked me. But I also can't be out here saying, oh, oh, you need to change when I don't look in the mirror myself and come to the end of myself for the things that are wrong with me, for the things that I have refused to address or didn't see or allowed to fester because I was too lazy or didn't want to address it or thought I'm fine as I am and people need to just accept me. Well, the thing is men are not accepting it anymore. We're sliding more into a culture where it's just, you know, you know, everything is online. Uh, women are continuing to over-sexualize themselves. Men continue to simp or, you know, you know, over women over-sexualize. And there's no real connection. There's no real families being made except for these kind of Build-A-Bear ones where there's a, he got a baby mama there. She got a baby daddy there. Like it's these Build-A-Bear thing, relationships that this is not how God designed us, but we keep doing it. And we, when is the end? When is the stop gap going to come? And right now, this is where I feel like I have to talk to women. We have to be held accountable for these choices. It doesn't mean that men are perfect, but until you have done all the work yourself on yourself, we, we, none of us can, we have no room, okay? No room to point fingers because if you want results, you have to do the work. That's the only way anything is going to happen. You only have control over you and only you can make decisions and change your life. No, no amount of blaming or pointing fingers at someone else will fix anything in your life. All of this begins with self, and it comes with humility, and it comes with uh, letting that pride go, because we know pride comes before the fall, getting the help and therapy that you need, getting your spiritual life in order, asking God, because many women in the black community are spiritual or are Christian. We could care. We want to do Sierra's prayer, but we don't want to do the work that the Lord requires for us to do to make changes. And if you aren't a Christian, that makes no difference to me. I'm telling you what you need to do because many of us, we are fatherless, but we need a direction. We need a moral compass that was not given to us as children. And where do you find that moral compass? For me, it's how I was raised in the Lord, in church. Then do I agree with everything that goes on in church? No, but I would tell you what, when you feel like you have to answer to someone higher than yourself, a power higher than yourself, you make better choices and you don't just live to consume it to yourself. You actually have to look and, and consult God and actually humble yourself. And actually, you, you have to submit yourself to God first before you can ever submit yourself to a man or submit yourself in a way to build a lasting family. It just is the reality. So I, I hope that makes sense for somebody. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one.